So basically, uh, what we're going to do today is go over problem 1159, 1161, and uh, the goal. And you know, if you get there's really these two are very easy. There's just some points you have to keep clear uh, when you're doing them, and uh, I think that uh, it, again, it should be an easy one for you. So um, we'll go ahead and start with uh, problem 1159. Um, let me... Okay. Did something happen there? Something? Yeah, you lost the huh. video. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, simply a rod. It starts off stationary. It's pinned at one end and then accelerates from, well, oh no, I'm sorry, it does not start off. Stationary. It starts off at 2 RPM and it accelerates to 10 RPM in 6 seconds. Determine the total acceleration at the outer end when T equals 6 seconds. Now the first thing that we have to recognize for all of this is when we're talking about this total acceleration for something that's rotating, it's going to have two components, right? It's going to have the uh, tangential component and it's going to have a normal component. The normal component is asso associated with the centripetal force. The tangential component is simply uh, related to the uh, rotational acceleration. And so we'll, we'll first look at um, tangential acceleration. This is very important that the tangential acceleration you, by the way, are you seeing the uh, the PowerPoint at this time? Yeah. 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 It, tangential acceleration is a function of alpha. That's the rotational acceleration only. That means that it's not a function of the velocity. Okay? So tangential acceleration is only a function of rotational acceleration. If there is no rotational acceleration, then there's no tangential acceleration. It's extremely important that you, uh, that you recognize that. So we can calculate the rotational acceleration from equation 11-2. It's just like acceleration except in the rotational domain. So rotational acceleration alpha is equal to the change in rotational velocity over the change in time. So it's just like translation. It's just rotation instead of translation. And I know the beginning and end omega, and I know the time gap. So it's easy to calculate. Delta W is equal to 10 minus 2, right, based on the definition of the problem. Okay? And uh, the time is 6 seconds. So it's simply 10 minus 2 is 8, so it's 8 revolutions, uh, whoops, oh, so, so, uh, it's, so delta W is 10 minus 8 RPM, we convert that to radians in the standard way we've been doing it all along, right, everybody should be able to do that, 2 pi radians per rev, one minute per second, and I get it in radians per second. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Somebody say no, or was that a yes? Yes. Okay. So now all we need is the, the, the denominator, delta T, which is six seconds, right? And we can calculate alpha. Alpha is equal to the delta W, a delta omega over delta T. And now I have alpha. Now, just like uh, velocity, alpha, I mean, tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times the rotational. For velocity, omega tangential is equal to the radius times um, the velocity, the rotational velocity. So they're very much the same. And I, so all I'm doing is multiplying the rotational velo uh, acceleration times r, which is three feet. So at is equal to three feet times my uh, 
alpha and I get a number. So now I have a number for the tangential acceleration. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. it, it asks for total acceleration. That means I also have to calculate normal acceleration. Do you remember, normal acceleration is a function of omega only. So in, in this case, uh, it's not associated with rotational acceleration at all. It's independent of rotational acceleration. It's only a function of um, omega, or, you know, uh, you could make it uh, associated with tangential velocity. We did that. It would be v squared over r, but still, it's just associated with velocity. Does that make sense? So they're independently calculated. So now I, I know what omega is at six seconds. It, remember, it wants this at six seconds. So now I know what omega is at six seconds. It's 10 RPM, right? And I know the radius. So it's, uh, first I'm gonna convert 10 RPM to radians. Now I'm going to uh, substitute three feet times 10, times the omega squared and I get a number. And, uh, and remember, the radians disappeared, evaporated, but that always happens. You just have to let the radians go. <laughs> There's nothing you can really do about that. It's, uh, it's just a funny um, dimension because it's a dimensionless dimension. So it disappears. Now I have tangential and normal, but I need to find the total. So the total acceleration, the, the, the um, magnitude is simply gonna be the square of the sum of the squares of the tangential. Did I? Oh, this is very poor. Why did I not draw vectors? Well, uh, yeah, I know why I didn't do it because I supposed to be at six seconds, but um, let's see, I think, let me see. Let's try this. So if it were here, um, the tangential, if it's close, let's say for the sake of argument, they didn't say which direction. I'm gonna say it's kind of clockwise. So the tangential, uh, I, I got the wrong color. Tangential would be Tangential would look something like this, right? Boy, that's straight. And the normal always goes toward the center, right? Now these aren't to scale, but now you know how to do it. You get the amplitude by the uh, um, square of the sum of the squares, right? To get this amplitude. And that's not the way a vector would be drawn to add them. It would be drawn like uh, uh, tip to tail, right? So I would say uh, a normal plus a tangential, right? And that will be equal to um, a I'll fix this on uh, on the slide. I should have put them in here. Pardon? I'm having a little trouble understanding you. Slow down just a little bit. Say it again. Who said that? No one? Okay. Uh, so, so that's what I'm doing here. And now I would like the angle uh, in between them. So there's the value now of A, and the angle in between them will depend on the location on the circle. So if it starts here and it rotates for six seconds accelerating, it's not gonna end here. That's why I didn't draw it. But I was kind of interested. Now this is all the problem was really asked for. It asked for the um, total acceleration. You, you know, you can't really put a direction unless I tell you where it stops, right? And I didn't tell you that. 
So you would only put the amplitude, and if, if I asked you this, you'd say, well, the direction depends on where it's located, where it started and where it stopped. At six seconds, it's where they asked, where is it on the circle? Does that make sense? So even though it is a factor, we don't have enough information in the problem statement to tell what the angle is. And that's really it. They're independent. So the normal and tangential are independent. Normal is a function of velocity only. Tangential is a function of rotational acceleration only. So you would do them separately and come up with uh, a, a, a net A. Okay. Could you do now, me a favor? Absolutely. Uh, could you go back to the uh, AT part? I looked away for a second. And sure. Missed it. Sure. AT equals R A. All right. Just want to make sure I got that right. Appreciate it. Sure. So um, just uh, for fun, even though it wasn't part of the statement of the question, it does kind of beg the question, where does it end up? So I went ahead and calculated how many revolutions. So if it starts right here, how many revolutions did it turn? And I just used this equation. I guess that's equation 12.3. Uh, I didn't put a number there. But that's just the equation. We actually, in physics, you usually call this the equation of motion, right? So this is the equation of motion. It looks just like a translation that says S equals V0T plus one half A T squared. So now we're just putting in the rotational terms. I know the initial velocity was two revolutions per minute. I worked that out. That's for omega zero. I know the alpha, right? And we calculated that. And I know it took six seconds. So I can calculate theta from this position here as 1.4 revolutions. So in six seconds, and in fact, this is actually pretty much to scale and to the right speed, if you watch what happens here. See, it's accelerating, and at six seconds, it's right there, 1.4 revol revolutions. Now, it doesn't tell you that it stopped there. We don't know what happens afterwards, right? But it keeps going, but that's the motion. Now, if I gave you this as the end, then you could give me the angle. You could get the uh, tangential and the normal, right? and you would get some acceleration that would look something like this. Oops, excuse uh -huh. me. Something like this. All right, so, but I didn't ask for that in this question because we didn't know where it ended up. I mean, I figured it out, but nobody asked for it. So really, I'm not asking you to, for this last part here, I'm asking you to just be able to do this far, to figure out what the total acceleration is of uh, something, uh, some uh, object that has uh, acceleration, rotational acceleration, and of course, velocity. That makes sense? They're independent, and you combine them after you're done using vectors. Questions? Anybody? Okay. So, um, I see. Okay. So, um, that's one way that I could uh, ask the question for Chapter 11. Uh, the second way that I might ask it would be uh, the reverse. So, the reverse is I tell you what the total is and ask you to figure out what the uh, speed is or the acceleration is. So let's take, a, let's take a look at that. What's going on here? Uh, no, okay, now we go. So this is problem 1161. I think my connection. Well, last, 
one that is. I uh, yeah, lost you for a second there. So this is problem 1161. Point P, and notice point P is given the location from the drawing, has a total acceleration. Is somebody yet saying something? No. Has a total acceleration of eight meters per second at the instant shown in the figure. Determine the angular velocity and the angular acceleration. Sorry, uh so what are you seeing now? Are you seeing the uh, the uh, PowerPoint? Are you seeing the PowerPoint? Uh, is, I don't even see you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Sorry about that. It must be something wrong with my connection. I don't know. Uh, you know, with all the people that are doing these classes, now are you seeing the PowerPoint? Yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing it with other things or? No. Okay. The same. All right. 11 six one. Okay, so the idea here is that now I'm giving you the total acceleration and I want you to figure out what the uh, angular velocity is and the angular acceleration. So it's in reverse now. So first of all, I find the tangent and normal components of A. Of A. So there's A, right? I'm just redrawing it. And I know that it has a, a tangential component and it has a normal component towards the center. Normal is always toward the center. And of course, the sum of those has to equal A, so I can just draw these vectors like that and use what I know about trigonometry to calculate A N and A T, right? That makes sense? So if I give you an acceleration and you just have to get the components in the tangential and normal directions using trig. So a tangential, clearly, the cosine of 20 is at over a, right? So a is equal to, at is equal to a times the cosine of 20. Does that make sense? Yeah, we were doing that yesterday, weren't we? Something Pardon? similar? We were doing something oh. like this last day. Well, I think we've done a lot, yeah, trying to get the components. That's right. So we do, we do that often. We take a vector and break it down into components because it's easy to, then they're independent. They call it, they're normal. They're, uh, they're uh, let's see, what is that other word? There's another word I'm trying to think of. Orthogonal. <laughs> orthogonal. Orthogonal has a funny meaning in math. It means, hey, you can separate them out. So when we do this, we put them in, uh, in these uh, components, we can deal with them separately. It's a lot easier than trying to deal with a vector. It's easier to deal with these components, orthogonal components. So in this case, they have a significance in that one of them is tangential acceleration and one of them is normal. So the tangential acceleration is equal to the cosine of, of, of 20 is equal to AT over A, right? Just trig. Therefore, AT is equal to A cosine 20. Everybody okay with that step? Mm -hmm. All right, let me try that again. Here's, here's the angle of 20 degrees. Here's my A, which is the hypotenuse. And here is the leg AT. So the cosine of 20 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So if you look here, cosine 20 is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. I didn't put it in there, uh, but that, that's, a, that's a very simple step. Um, of uh, going, knowing what the cosine definition is leads me to this. Is that okay? If you, if what I would do is if you're having trouble, just write here, and I'll go ahead and write it on here, but you know, just, just write yourself a note that says uh, cosine. I'm doing this with my mouse, so bear with me, of 20. <laughs> equals what? 
Kate over A, right? That's by definition. And then I just multiply both sides by A to get this one, right? Okay, so that's all there is to that. And uh, um, I'm getting a, I'm getting an announcement saying they're going to knock us off at 40 minutes. I don't think they will. I got an announcement saying they're not going to do that because of all these issues. But we'll see what happens. If you if you, we get knocked off at 40 minutes, uh, we'll just come right back on. Okay, we'll start another one. Okay, so now I know what. Uh, uh, AT is simply from trigonometry, and I'm, I'm halfway there, right? And it says to find the angular velocity and the angular acceleration, and we found the angular, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, not yet, no, no. So we're, we're halfway to finding the uh, angular velocity. Now remember, tangential velocity, uh, uh, tangential acceleration, is a function only of what? Tangential acceleration is a function only of rotational acceleration. So I can write, well, first of all, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was doing normal first, but here's the normal, I'm gonna, I want the normal uh, component, it's the same only as the sine because the sine is equal to a n over a, therefore a n equals a sine of 20. So it looks just like this, only there's an a n here and there's a sine. It's just simple um, um, trigonometry. Do you want me to write it in or are we good? No, I think we're good, I mean. Okay, all right. So now I know those two uh, components. I can get angular acceleration because angular acceleration is associated with tangential only by this equation. And that's, this is, this is very key. I keep saying it over and over. You have to know this. You start thinking, okay, how do I calculate angular acceleration when I've got uh, two vector? No, no, angular acceleration is only a function of tangential and tangential is only a function of rotational. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Are you out with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. R is equal to 0.15 meters because the diameter is 0.3. Do the math. Solve for alpha. And I get a number. And it's half of the problem. I said find the angular velocity and the angular acceleration. So the first thing we did was find angular acceleration. It's a function of tangential acceleration only. Very important. Okay, so next we're going to find the angular velocity. And we do that because we know that the normal velocity is a function of what? Angular velocity only. So I'm going to change pages, you right? Uh, oh, I don't change pages, okay. So normal acceleration is given by r omega squared. And it's asking me for uh, angular velocity, which is omega, right? I know r, I know the normal, I just calculated it. So I simply plug and chug. There's my normal acceleration, I know r, so I can say that omega is equal to the square root of normal acceleration over the radius, plug the numbers in, and I get a value. Notice, angular acceleration is a function of uh, um, uh, tangent acceleration only. Tangent acceleration is a function of rotational acceleration only. The normal, Normal acceleration is a function of either angular velocity or velocity, tangential velocity. I mean, they, they're related only. So it doesn't, the, the uh, 
angular acceleration does not come into the equation at all for normal acceleration. Does that make sense? Independent, independent. Is it, you getting it? So I sort of look the same. Uh, I just went for, I went from having normal and tangential to finding the result. And in this step, in this one, I, I knew the results and I found normal and tangential. Okay, you're gonna have a, a question that's like one of these two. And that's it. That's all for chapter 12. Okay, now if I were you, I would make sure that you have access to this. You should make no mistake. Because remember, this is open book, open notes. This is one page, either printed or you can have it on your computer. I mean, the advantage of printing is, is if your computer goes down, there it is, right? Uh, uh, but, you know, if you don't want to print, or uh, that's okay. But that's just uh, uh, one way you can do this. Because frankly, if you, if you have this, I don't see how you don't get, you, you, I don't see how you can miss the question. Open, open book, open notes, okay? So I think, you're, I think we're good here. Any questions on chapter 11? Basically, they're going to look like these, one of these two problems. Okay. 